In the last masterclass, I showed you how to create a set of custom navigation buttons like this to put on your access forms. When we did that, we also got rid of the built-in navigation buttons, which are located down here at the bottom of the form window. But in doing that, we also lost the built-in record counter. Now, it's useful to have a record counter, so if you have removed it, then it's quite easy to add one of your own. I'll show you an example. Here we are. And it's simply a label that is powered by VBA code and it tells the user which record they're on and how many records there are in the record set. And when they move from record to record, or if they were to add a record, the record counter would change to reflect that. So it's quite an easy thing to do. I'll just close this form and we'll get started. So the first thing you need to do is take your form into design view. Now I'm going to place my record counter down here in the footer of my form alongside my buttons, but you can place it anywhere on the form. It will work just as well. I'm going to use a label. Some people like to add text onto their forms using an unbound text box. Uh, that is a text box that's not linked to a record in the underlying record set, but I prefer to use a label. So I just click on the label tool up here and click on my form more or less where I want the label to be. Now it's quite important that you don't click somewhere else at this point because if you do, Access will assume that you don't want to use that label and will throw it away. So I'm just going to type something in it. I'll type record counter and just press enter or click somewhere now to save it. And you'll notice that uh, Access has suddenly become alarmed. It's put a, a green triangle in the corner there telling you it's not happy with this. And if I point at the little icon there, I'll get a message saying that this is a new label and it's not associated with a control. Well, we know that and we're quite happy with our label sitting there on its own. So if I click this icon, I can tell it to ignore what it considers to be an error. And now I'm just going to go and take a look at my label in form view. And there I can see it. I'm not too happy with its position or its size or, or colour. So I need to format it so that it looks the way that I want. Back in Design View, my label is selected. If it weren't selected, I would just click on it to select it. And I'll go to the Format tab on the ribbon. I want to change its size to 16 point. I want it to be bold and I'm going to make the text black. Of course, you can decorate it however you want. Now I've made the text bigger, the label is too small to display it, so I can drag the dots that uh, are located around the edge of the label, but a quick way to snap the label to the right size for its text is to double click this dot that's in the lower right hand corner. So I'll just double click that and you'll see that the label snaps to the required size. I want to change its position though and make it a little bit wider. Again, I could use the mouse to drag it, but I prefer to use the keyboard. So I'm going to click the up arrow a couple of times to get it where I want it. Uh, left a little bit. And uh, to make it wider, I'm going to hold down the shift key whilst I click the right arrow and that increases the width. Now you can quite safely make this wider than you, you think you might need because you don't want it to be too narrow. It won't automatically change its size to accommodate whatever's in it. So uh, unless you have actually placed a border on your label, which I haven't done, the user's not going to see how wide it is anyway. They'll just see the text. Let's take a look at that in form view again. 
and yes I'm happy with the position and uh, the look of that text. And what I need to do now is write some code that will change the record counter and display which record the user is on and the total number of records. So back into design view. Now before I start working in code I want to give my label a sensible name. Um, it's currently called label 29. Uh, if I go to the other tab here and click on the name property I'm going to call it LBL record counter. It doesn't matter what you call it as long as it's something meaningful and you'll know what, what that is. Well now to write the code we need to use an event procedure and that's not one of the labels own event procedures it's one associated with the form itself it's the event procedure which is called the current event now the current event procedure happens when the form opens and also when the user moves from record to record so that we can use that to write into the label what number record we're on and uh, the total number of records. So I need to find the properties uh, of the form. So one quick way of doing that is to drop this little down arrow here on the property sheet and find form. There it is on the list. And now we go to the event tab. Now if you've created um, the buttons already you'll have an event procedure here and Clicking the build button here, the button with three dots on it, will take you straight to it. If you don't already have an event procedure here because you're, you haven't already created something, then pressing the build button will open a, a small dialog box which will ask you what you want to do and you just tell it code builder and you'll end up in the same place as I'm going now. Okay, that's taken me straight to the Visual Basic Editor and I'm in my form current event and here's the code that I wrote in the last masterclass to power the buttons. Now it doesn't matter where you put the code that we're about to write I'm going to add it to the end of this code. I'm also going to add a few empty lines at the bottom here so that you can see this a little bit more easily. And I simply want to write a code statement that will write the required information into the caption property of the label. So I'm going to start off with the word me which is um, referring to the form itself followed by a dot and the name of my label which is LBL record counter. Notice that as I type the uh, list scrolls down to the item that I want and I just need to double click it to accept it. Dot caption equals and I, now I just need to write the caption now the caption is going to be quite long so I'm going to actually put my code on a new line and uh, I mustn't do that just by pressing enter for a new line I've got to tell uh, the code that this particular code statement continues on a new line and we do that by typing a space followed by an underscore there we are and now I can have a new line I'm going to tab in for clarity. So what is the caption going to read? Uh, the text parts of the caption need to be in quotes. So in quotes I'm going to type the word record followed by a space because I need a space in the text. An AND sign and a bit of code that's going to insert the number of the record that we're on which is me dot current record and now I need another and sign and I'm going to open the quotes space of space close the quotes again another and and then me dot record set dot now it hasn't given me a list now that's because 
record set could possibly mean a lot of different things and it, it's not sure what list to give me so it hasn't given me one at all but I know I can type record count and I'll just click somewhere else just to make sure everything's okay so what it's going to say is record and then a number such as five of and then total number of records 1084 record five of 1084 or whatever okay always check your code by going to debug and compile and then we'll save and switch back into access and move our form into form view and there we are record one of 1084 let's check it out that seems to be working fine but what happens if we go to a new record it's telling me record 1085 of 1084 which doesn't really make sense the built-in record counter would do the same it, it means that we're on a new record and there's only 1084 in the record set but to me that doesn't make sense so when it's on a new record I want it to say something slightly different so I'm going to go and change that by going back into design view and uh, there's a, a button up here that will take us into the um, Visual Basic Editor or you can go back to the current event and press the build button there and what I'm going to do is put an if statement here so that it'll check first to see if we're on a new record so make an empty line here an if statement if me dot new record I don't have to type equals true but I, I could do but if you don't it assumes that then what are we going to do? New line, tab in. Me dot. That'll be our record counter. Dot caption equals. And you can have it say whatever you want at this point. I'm just going to have it say new record. The second part of the if statement, so if we're not on a new record else, then it's going to show the original bit of code, which I'm going to tab in and finish off the if statement with end if. Fine, we'll check that out. First of all, debug, compile and save. Why do I do this? Because if you've inadvertently written some code which crashes access, and that is possible, then because you've just saved your work, you won't lose anything. So back into access and into form view. So here we are, record one of 1084. Next, next. That's fine. Uh, what about a new record? So if we go to a new record, it says new record here. And again, you could have that say whatever you want. If we go back, there we are. So that's the if statement working. And job done. If you want to follow a written version of this tutorial, you can go to my website at www fontstuff.com where you'll find a downloadable version of this file and also a PDF that you can download of the tutorial as well as looking at a written version of the tutorial online.